a lot of months ago, I made this for a novel. And then later it became Entropy, which is a song that I released a couple days ago. So I thought I would break this song down because when I was getting into production, uh, no one that I cared about at least really broke down their songs. And I was left confused about a lot of stuff that was going on with the song. So I want to break it down and hopefully this will be helpful for anyone that's like trying to get into this kind of sound or just into music overall. So yeah, uh, let's start. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go from, you know, the beginning to the end. So I'm not really that organized. As you can see from the project, it's really messy, but I really hope this makes sense. To start off with, we just have the bass, which is just, it's really just the simplest three bass line uh, notes or chords or whatever that you can think of and it just has a little OTT well apparently not a little but has OTT has some EQ and has another EQ which is used for high passing later on the song and it's like I turned down the wet note so the mix level is like zero right now so it doesn't like cause any mixing phasing problems Normally, it's recommended that you turn on linear phase mode for, you know, more bass elements, more drum elements, or just overall anything, honestly. It's just, you know, it's it's better as latency, but, like, it, it doesn't mess with your sound in a weird way. But for some reason, when I toggle that, or when I have, like, any plugin that has latency, my sidechain gets, like, really messed up on everything else but that sound. So I usually like don't have it enabled, but I guess it's better if you do. It's just, you know, it comes down to if it breaks stuff or not. If it breaks stuff, you can just render it, but I mean, that's about it. Then we have the strings, which are sampled from another project that I have. I think it's from Placeholder, which is another song that I released like last year. And it has these effects, it has like delay. I think this is ping pong. Yeah, it has some reverb doesn't it doesn't really have that complicated of anything has this uh has what the hell it has this eq which is literally just getting rid of the low mids and lows and and maybe some tonal adjustments honestly and i have this fruity balance which is here for volume automations because normally you would expect someone to go here right click and create an automation clip but you see this delete initial value button did not exist in earlier versions of FL Studio. At least I didn't know about it. So what I get, what I got accustomed to is just adding a 3D balance instance whenever I want to automate the volume so that I can automate this and this can be anything. But if I want to change the master volume and want it to just be louder at all times, I can just, you know, change this and it will stay that way. Then I have this piano sample thing, which is, I think this is be worst, yeah. And it's pitched down because this is also from, like these, it's also from another project that I had, which is not released, I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this project and it's from the break right here. You can hear it in the background, but what I like doing is if you come here and scroll down and go to your rendered, you have everything that you've ever rendered, ever consolidated in FL Studio. All the vocal takes that you thought were gone, all everything else, they're here. And you can just click on anything you want, like this. And it's you can use it in a song. And it's really good because you have your very own unique sample library here that has a lot of really distinct stuff that's just got left over from whatever you were doing in another project. So that's where I got this from. It's just from another song 
another demo that I made. And it's reversed and, you know, pitched in time and everything else. But yeah, it's just a reverse piano, honestly. There's nothing that much complicated about it. Then I have this piano, and I think this is Keyscape. Oh no, it's Addictive Keys. I have this, and the surprising thing about this, I noticed this right now, it's not linked to any mixer channel. It's not mixed. It doesn't have any, it doesn't have any effects on it, directly at least. And also, yeah, my master, I have an OTT on my master apparently. It's, you know, that's how we know I'm, that's how you know it's an amazing project that's totally gonna do numbers if you have OTT on your master. It's not, it's bad practice. Don't do this, but, you know, do as I say, not as I do, I guess. Old habits die hard. And also, it just made it sound better in my defense. In my defense. I'm sorry, bad narrator or airy from, you know, Twitter. Always complaining about people using OTT. I put it on my master, okay? I'm guilty. Can never like those tweets. Anyways. I have this sound, which is just... It's just some random noise, honestly. And nothing that complicated. I don't know where I found it. I may have just made it myself. But... It's just some noise that gets automated up and then down. And this part is like the impact, this whole like automated up stuff along with this. You know, like the very intro beginning impact. All that stuff is whatever you see right here. Um, from For that, I have like this sound as well, which is I think this is just some random song from SoundCloud I threw in Quanta and had like a really glitchy section so I made it into a texture. <laughs> and I think I made that like years ago so it found its way here. You can get it free from my website, it's just up there. You can get it free. And I have this, which is... It's just some random noise that's panned really to the right. Then it has a delay, it's ping pong delay once again. And since it's panned right, I don't pan it right again. And it creates this really good, like, you know, left, right, left, right, right, left, whatever effect. I have this tonal sound. I don't know, I think this is just a sine wave. And pitch, it's pitched down. But nothing, it, it, it also has the same, like, uh, EQ, well, it's not the same EQ, but it's the same delay. Almost. So it's like left, right, left, right. I like it. I have this, which is 15 year old me whispering into a mic saying, like, ps, 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 and I threw it in Quanta apparently, and it's just a texture now that also found its way here because it's the. These sounds, some of these are really, really old. I don't know how I, I don't know how I found them in my sample library, but I did. And they got their way into here. This sound, this is just some random guitar. I don't know if I wrote it for this project or if it's from another one. Likely from another one. Yeah, it's pitched down. It's from another project. I don't even know which one it is, but... I, I, you can tell that I really like going down here and finding stuff that sounds okay or fitting. Then I have this, which is just a white noise impact. Uh, it has like high pass, I guess. Yeah, that, cause that sort of stuff, it, it's not complicated. I'm sampling Jaren here. It's only for a moment. The very beginning of that song, there is like a really good vocal sample that I really like, and it's the main vocal chop in this song as well, it's just really altered a bit. It sounds like this. And I have the variation. And I think it, it's it's the same sample, I just threw it in, I, I right clicked and said edit and pitch corrector, I changed the notes, I'm pretty sure. Now I have this, which is just some random noise from the Coldly sample pack. If you don't have it, I really recommend the Coldly sample pack. It's right here. You have like a lot of stuff that you can find in these. It has like a bunch of snares, a bunch of everything. 
I use it often in my projects. I think I had like a bunch of other stuff here as well that that was that was from that sample pack. Maybe this one. I I'm no I know definitely this one is from there. Well, anyways, we have this sound. It's just a piano. I think this is from Rainfall, another song of mine, and I just took it from there and uh, just pitched it down. The interesting thing about this is just a piano hit, but in that song, I don't do it here, but in the original song before I like consolidated this, it's just like I I I think I went into stretch pro mode and put it down by like some couple hundred cents in the format, so it had like a weird that kind of sound that's not exactly a piano but that's very obviously a piano it's just like variation honestly yeah this sound which is very audible in the intro of the song and some other parts and like and like here as well and it's from the coldly sample pack once again and it's amazing i love it it's just automated up don't, don't, it's not even mixed like it it doesn't go into any mixer track it's just unmixed but it's like maybe i console yeah it's consolidated that's why it's not mixed i have this sound which is just it's a slowed down kick it's consolidated i think i just stretch it out yeah definitely stretch it out and i automate it to volume so it sounds like an impact it's like a whoosh kind of sound I have this and it's not audible at first but it's just if i go in here as a gate it's, it has a dynamic eq didn't open for some reason uh as a gate and if i disable it you can hear it's just some random reversed uh bells and with the gate it sounds a bit choppy and also it has a really weird reverb room i have this pad which is just it's pole stretch for Robinson Divinity. Sounds amazing. It sounds gorgeous. Let's have a listen to this. Like it's really cool. And it's just pole stretch and I think a bit of reverb. I have this sound, which is just something I recorded on my phone. It's just for texture, just filling up that spectrum. I have this, which is also to fill up the spectrum. It's an amazing sound. I use this in every project ever and it's just it's water but like it's artificial i didn't record anything i forgot how i made it i think i found like a sample that sound vaguely sound like water droplets and i tried to make it sound more like water and this was the result god i love that i have this pad which is this is literally just a random pad that's pitched down to fit the key i have this which is the it's like the same divinity pole stretch but it goes through some weird effects that make it sound like this i'm pretty sure there's like multi-band delay there and i think before that it goes in quanta and does like weird stuff that i'm not quite sure of right now i don't remember that well this was made a long time ago a lot of my samples are made a long time ago i have this sample which is just a granulized version of little fate the woods with Makina, I think maybe. Not sure who was the collaborator, but that's not. That's beside the point. That's besides the point. Uh, it's a, it was a really good song. It doesn't exist anymore. Uh, they deleted the song, but I have the pad, so I use it. It's uh, that's one of my favorite pads. And I have another version of the Divinity Pole Stretch. This time another section, and this time sounds a lot weirdly pitched for some reason, but it fills up that spectrum i guess and that's about it i have a couple like automations just putting this up and that sort of stuff but oh yeah i didn't mention but i have i'm automating the delay on the strings so it only adds delay on like a very loud hit kind of parts so it doesn't like make the delay it makes the delay sound a bit more snappy i guess see like that like the very switch part it just like delays but everything else is like not delayed and i do that by automating the wet knob here and the fruity delay tree then i have this part 
I have this part. Which has a lot more going on compared to the previous part. But it's mostly the same stuff. Uh, you still have your bass, you still have your strings and piano and all of that stuff. So I'm going to talk about the new stuff. We have the drums that are faintly here. And it's being ran through. I think a couple of yeah it was it was being ran through spectral circle it's the disabled right now but it's a plugin that I made it's just like it does this I don't know how to explain this it's just make circles using the EQ and it's being ran through that and a bunch of that kind of stuff to achieve this kind of spectral sounding sound that was a sentence. It, has, it also has OTT. And I have this, which is just... It's guitar. It's, I think it's ample guitar. Doesn't matter. It's just some really artificial sounding guitar. But it fills up the spectrum, so I use it. I still use this as the impact between like every uh, section. Then I have like the actual drums that are not being ran through, forced to go through that weird kind of effects chain. The real drums they get like they have automations they start really quiet and slowly spectral gate their way into existence and it has like lossy which is it's like spectral gate but sounds more like mp3 than spectral gate i guess it sounds like it's just low quality i actually have i have the actual spectral gate here as well i have an eq that's like this and and the balance for volume automations later on and here as well i have the metal sound as well from the intro and i have this which sounds really really cool it's the pulse stretch divinity again it has delay and that's about it, it has ping pong delay and high pass in a weird way it sounds like this It's really cool. I love that kind of sound. I don't know why it's like so smoothly going from right to left, left to right, but it's doing that and I like it. And I have the kicks going on here. I talked about the other divinity pad, so I'm just gonna skip over that. I have the kicks, you know, for tempo, rhythm, whatever. And I have this clap sounding thing, which is more like a, white noise down or impacts or whatever but it works apparently i had this but i disabled this i don't think it exists anywhere else in the song it's just a really weird impact sounds like a thunder apparently i didn't use that in this section but they're being used elsewhere in this part and we're gonna get to that later on also at the end of this drum section I get the dry drums and you know make like a switch kind of part. Then I also have the vocals from Shameless's song Hyacinth. He sent me for like a dry record thing that I was doing in a VC. And I think I sampled it here. It's really faint, but it's there. So yeah. After this part, we go into the main break or hook. I don't know how to section songs. So for that part, we have we have the main strings like just doing whatever they're doing as always. We remove the bass because we want like the tension, and I want it to feel like a chord, but not actually like a chord. So like any chord that you can think of. Can work because it's just a bunch of pads and not really a chord or a bass or whatever so i wanted to achieve that and i achieved it i think i like the section a lot i have this again uh the drums that that are being ran through some weird funky effects i have this which is i think Cynthia's voice uh she shared something on twitter and i think i threw it in like some granalyzer 
and made it into texture. I, I really like making textures from random stuff. I think they sound really good. I have this here, which is, I think this is Keyscape. Uh, it's just a random patch that I like. It's a bell. I have the same delay thing going on. And, you know, the, all the same textures from the intro, they just keep repeating. Uh, same for the piano. Oh, this is not the piano, this is a guitar. Never mind. Uh, I have, like, the actual drums that are being, you know, introduced here. Uh, so, yeah, that's the... If you, if you want to sample it, you can... I think they're really cool. I have the actual like punchy low andy kick here. Just to, you know, get give, give some emphasis on the kicks that are on like the parts that I want. So yeah, I have all these disabled because these are like a, what I used to make the drums. I had this which is like the unprocessed version of the drums and I apparently did this stuff and then this stuff I like combined them somehow and it worked out the weird stuff happening in this project man I swear to god I talked about those and everything else I don't think there's like anything else that I can talk about here except this which is you know how I talked about the funky effects that I have I can't find it here but I have a bunch of those that do different stuff. So I ran the whole thing so far until this point through weird effects that make it sound like spectral. Like just it turns it into random sound design in key. Honestly, there's not much science behind it. It's just randomized knobs and everything else. I may put those on a Patreon if I ever create one. But uh, yeah, I ran the whole track through some patcher stuff that I made and made it sound like this. And there are some like automations here that make like the high end or like if there's like a resonant sound makes it like it just tames the sound. It just tames the sound and makes it a lot more fitting. It doesn't make it like, you know, it doesn't make it destroy your ears, if that makes sense. And I apparently have a single clap. Oh, well, not single. I have two claps here. And they bring some high end along. It's like a riser, I guess. Just makes it sound more energetic before it gets switched into this part with bass. For the vocals, I, I don't think I can talk much about the vocals, but I will release the stems. And you can check it out for yourself, but it basically has and you want it at the, start. the really badly sang vocals, like the sides and the main vocal, which and is... You want it at the start. I think kind of better compared to those, but I don't think I will talk much about the vocals because there's not much I can talk about. The processing is literally just compression and autotune. And autotune is not that intense, I guess, except for the sides, because I like doing that to the sides, honestly. Make, you don't really notice it. But there is nothing much to talk about in that aspect. I can talk about mixing at the end of the vocals. But as I said, it's just compression, man. I don't think there's much else. Then I go into this section, which sounds like Yeah, uh, this is gonna be a lot of stuff, but it's mostly the same stuff with like variation. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about here. So like we have the same bass, it's the same bass, but it's descending instead of ascending. 
Then we have the strings that are ever so slightly different. They're just arranged different. It's the same sounds. It's like it's like not as intense, I guess. We have the same piano thing. This is just like it goes on through the entire song. We have the piano, which is like this. It's a different addictive keys instance. It's still not mixed. It's just louder, and uh, mainly is just like the descending chord progression instead of the ascending one. It doesn't have the top notes, so that's it. Then I have this, which has the top notes, and apparently it is mixed. It's going to here, which is low cutting this. I think the, I think I purposefully didn't mix these because I love like the low end that I didn't really want to like mess up mess with it, but I could I probably could have done some mixing on them. I still have the same, the drum thing going on with the weird effects. And like these and all of that, like the guitars, which faintly disappeared here, comes back. I have the everything else that I talked about before going on. Oh, this is like a funny sound. I don't know where this is from. I have a lot of samples that I don't know the origins of, but it's a sound that sounds good. Sounds funny rather than good. But it fits. I, yeah, I didn't. I forgot the sound was in the song. Honestly, I'm discovering so much about the song again. And I think everything else is the same. We have the wooshy going on. Is this from a. I think this is just from a shameless sample pack, and I just got like the very end part. Uh, I have the sound design going on here again. That kind of stuff, I don't, there is nothing much to explain about this. Maybe the big mixing, I have to use the space. This is another thing that I made in Patcher. And what it does is literally just, oh, not that, it, it does this. It just makes it a wave, similar to the circle. Not, not everything I make, like, does this sort of stuff, but it's, like, similar. I have, like, delay and, you know, this is just getting resonant stuff every once in a while. I didn't want to automate the EQ, so I just used the dynamic one. It's probably a better way to do that, but I don't care. It works. I have another EQ here, and I have another delay. I don't know why I added two delays, but this is faster than the other one, I think. Oh, never mind. This is faster. It just adds in more space, I guess. Yeah, it just makes it... It just doubles it, honestly. And I think this is all about that section and the last part of the part that I made you listen to uh, is just the same thing, but a lot less stuff. It, it's like actually we're, we're taking stuff away before the drop to create tension and we're taking this thing away and that thing away and this doesn't repeat once again and the drums faintly like do a little variation. Dude does that and like you no know, ends here. And the stuff that stay here are the stuff that I talked about before. So I'm not gonna talk about those. But the only thing that I add is a symbol two sound. I think this is from an Asha demo that I made, and it's a symbol sound, and I real I just use it in every project. I should probably add this to my favorites or make it like you know usable again, but it just sounds like this. And like it sounds so good. It's like the perfect cymbal sound, crash sound that I like. So yeah, that's that. And before switching into the drop, we have the bass drop. This is from Ample Bass, free I think. And like if you go, if you scroll all the way up the piano roll and click on like the highest notes, you sometimes get stuff like this, which is... You know, I just took that and put it here. It, it was originally just like, it was originally a MIDI note that was playing this, but it, it like it changed every time that I exported the song. I didn't like that, so I exported like the perfect version, and doesn't even have any effects because it was already processed. I have this sound, which is just some rumbling and like bit crush going down, 
and OTT apparently and some EQs. I have this. Uh, this is just panning and this was like the previous name of the song Petrichor kind of thing because it was inspired by the 1975 song Petrichor because I had like a lead that was like that. It's just the same song but I'm taking like a section and this was inspired because I used to have like some delay artifact here some delay that I forgot to mute that was creating this sort of sound which is right before the drop and when I muted everything before the drop to make it like cleaner and more controlled I lost that so I was like how do I get it back and what I did was I just I just exported the song and used that honestly it, it worked pretty well so yeah no complaints there then we have this thing which is I, I, if I tried, I, I could probably find it, but it's in my rendered folder once again. It's from some random project. I used it as like a riser of some sort. I have this, which is, I think this is like a OTT plus vocal processing plugins, plus like compression and like, I don't know, that sort of stuff. They're, when they're all combined, it creates this weird kind of laser effect. And I took that and reversed it. And it created this. Like, if I unreverse it, it sounds like this. So, yeah. And right before the drop, we get the drums that we muted before. I mean, deleted, but think of it as muted. We get it back. And it rolls us into the drop. And I don't think we have anything else before the drop. So, the drop is completely... Well, not completely, but it has a lot of other stuff that's going on we of course have the bass and so it's a lot more distorted it has like this high note here that i like and it does this as well it doesn't just descend it like it alternates it does that sort of stuff it's like you can just look at the midi notes and tell what it's doing honestly we have this which is a reese kind of sound that i export it and did weird stuff with it and it's just following along the bass it's like a double bass kind of thing i didn't want to add straight up just a reese i thought that would be like so full or just sound would sound weird so i just added this which is the same thing essentially i guess but i mean i did that so whatever we have the same piano thing going on from that other song we have the we have, you know, the piano, of course, as always. But this time it's mixed because it's the drop and we have like actual bass. So we don't want it to clash with everything else. So we cut the low end. Because before this, we had a bass, of course. But like, it wasn't really a bass. I mean, it's, it was a bass, but it was like, it was not, it wouldn't really clash. Well, it would clash, but it wouldn't be a problem, at least to me. So I, I kept the low end there. And I'm remembering this now, the reason why I kept the low end. We have the high piano. That's like... We have the high piano note doing that sort of stuff, as always. We have the same guitar notes that are repeating at the beginning of every, like... Is this a bar? I never really know. It, the, every section. We have that. We have this sound, which is really, really fucking cool. You can sometimes faintly, like, distinguish this from the rest of the song. Sometimes, like, here as well. You can hear it, and... It, I really like this sound. I don't know where it's from. Maybe I made it. But it sounds cool. We have that again, like it's just the same stuff over and over again. The piano as well and drums. They're not much different. We have more low end slightly. We have more kicks here that amplify emphasize on we have more kicks here that emphasize on the actual drums. Some people told me to make them more clickier, so that's why I like edit these. I don't think that's click here in any way because i added these but 
it, I mean, people liked it, so whatever. I mean, yeah, it is kind of click here, now that I think about it. I mean, there was a reason that I... I mean, I guess there was a reason why I added those. I have this Fritz sample. A Fritz snare. It's from the Coldly sample pack. I have the symbol that I showed before. I have this, which is from the intro. I talked about it. I have the water, as always. I have the pad that I from the intro. This from the intro. But now it's like ever so slightly different, I guess. Or not. <laughs> who, who knows at this point, man. We have the Kitchen Shaker. I use this in a lot of songs. It's from the Coldly Sample Pack once again. It's one of my favorite shakers. And... I think this has some reverb that's not active. Oh yeah, no, the reverb is in the thing. It has like some reverb here and stereo delay here. And it's like panned ever so slightly there because it's compensating the stereo delay. But yeah. Also, I didn't talk about the drums mixing. Drums are mixed like these. I'm cutting... Let me solo these. I'm cutting like this section. Because if I didn't, you would get like some really weird frequencies. I like the better. I like the more tame sound. Then we have 10% OTT because I hate bad narrator, I guess, in this project. We have the dynamic EQ. And apparently at some point I had sound goodizer and 3D balance, but they're disabled right now. So no one cares about those. <laughs> For these kicks. We have, well, the punch is just OT. Why do I use so much OTT? I'm just realizing I don't do this anymore. Maybe that's why I can't do music anymore. Who knows? I have OTT, some like low passing. And I have this kick, which is that. It's from like addictive drums, I guess. And it has a lot of processing. It's like OTT, one step again. Like, I don't care at that point. Uh, we have the transient shape and making it less transient for some reason. We have volume boosting, sound goodizer, all of these stuff, a soft clipper because soft clipping is cool and everyone should do it. Then we have another transient shaper after all these that is making it more clickier. So that's the entire processing on that kick. And for the collab, I think it doesn't even have a mixing channel. Then we have this thing which is this and it has a couple of controls over here and this is the main lead in the song and I really I really love this melody man like you can't I don't know how I wrote it I can't I could I probably couldn't write it again but it's a really good melody at least to me that is playing I mean it's just the same note over and over again I guess but I like it and it has some controls over here it's silent one and I'm controlling the cutoff just making it like more uh just making it more low but it's like starting low pass and you know lifting up the filter and all of that kind of stuff and I think it has like and I think it has like of course there's OTC, damn. It has some EQs that are, I guess, necessary. I have the delay, of course, as always. I love ping pong delay. I have the reverb, which is a triangle room. Once again, then I have another EQ that's just cutting everything off again. And I think that's about the lead. So we can just go into here. And we have the clap. That was that was not a clap. <laughs> yeah, we have some sine note that's repeating. I do that often in every other project. Just get like a sine wave. Uh this is probably consolidated from another project. I could I could have just done it. I have the same patch in Serum. It's just a sine wave block. And it's just playing one note over and over again. It feels like a it adds like tonality to the snare or clap. I have these going on here, which are technically some class, but I just use it for like high-end uh, energy, kind of. 
you know, you get you get the deal. You know how it be. I have this, which is I sampled this. I have like a really old. It's from a camera that I have from like 2008, seven. It's a Samsung vintage camera I found on like some random store, and I just got it for like what less than ten dollars probably. And yeah, I was I I. This is like the menu sound. This is like a click sound from that. And I really like the sound, so I I used it in this song. I used it in a bunch of different songs as well, I guess. It's like, it's just tonal weird things that I like. It's, there's a pattern to what I like. I have this. This is... I don't think I have the MIDI anymore here, but it's consolidated. Or maybe from another project, I'm not sure. Uh, it's Keyscape. It's the Keyscape bell that I showed before in the video. And it's low passed. I think the low passing is in this project. Yeah, this has this weird EQ, apparently. It's band passed. And it's playing like that really generic bing bong bang bong. Bong bang bang bong sound. Uh japanese school bell or just overall school bell honestly i think it's here in turkey as well or like doorbell sound i guess because it, it's in doorbells as well and then it has like this section which is just some random melody that i came up with at the time that too i have this which is just it's from placeholder and you can hear it in the intro placeholder. I like using like... I like using melodies from my other songs. And it's just like, it's, it's such a callback, I like doing that. But there's nothing like, it's the same keyscape bell as the one from before, but it's like high pass this time. It doesn't have mixing, but it's high passed. So it doesn't clash. I have these, and I will go through these like as fast as I can because it's just like some random claps. We get the Wushi here again, and it's, it has a lot more reverb this time. Then we have the Wonderland Snare from uh, the Coldly Sample Pack, and that, I mean, this is pretty straightforward, it's just like impacts and snares. Well, this is more like a clap, but, you know, you get the idea. Then we have this, which is... It's from Rainfall, another project of mine that I shared, like, a year ago at this point. It's the same patch as Portia Robinson Something Comforting lead. It's from SQ8L. It's a free plugin, as far as I know. And... It's the Breathe 3 preset from that plugin. So if you want to do like a something comforting remake, you can just download that and do that. But, you know, in this song, I just used it this way. There's some delay and that sort of stuff. But apparently it's just in the sidechain thing right now, but, you know, the original sample has delay and everything else. And yeah, that's like pretty much about the drop. I'm not going to play the whole drop because I think it will lag my PC. Maybe it will not. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about this, but like we have the... We have like that sort of stuff going on with the vocals. Uh, I don't know what my inspiration for this was. I was just saying random quotes, for saying random stuff, honestly. And uh, this happened. So, you know, always a good, always a good thing when you come up with stuff that works. Especially in vocals, because it's just like anxious for me to make vocals, do vocal vocals. Okay, I'm back after 
totally not 12 hours and uh i think i was talking about the war after totally not disappearing for 19 hours and attempting to record me explaining everything until the second drop but um having the fl studio audio muted i'm back and i will explain this part now i think i was talking about uh the vocals here and right here something well, kind of interesting is happening we have every delay and reverb effect on the vocals being silenced so it's like 100 percent. well not 100 but like it's really dry at this part because it's right before it switches to the second part of the spurs drop and we want to have that kind of clarity in the vocals and have it kind of more uh defined i guess I, I just wanted to have it less messy i guess because with the reverb and everything you can't like have the uh tension build up with like nothing happening right before the drop and then everything else is like when when the second part of the drop hits we have like everything coming at once and feels a lot larger so to in order to achieve that effect i'm silencing the delay and the reverb and while we're at here I can talk about some of the mixing on the vocals and the only difference between the drop vocals and uh, the break worse whatever vocals is that the drop vocals are just louder uh, and they're mixed exactly the same otherwise so what we have here is an instance of nectar 2 i guess i don't even remember what this was but it's Nectar by someone and what it's doing is basically it just has an auto tune here as always and it's like at 44 milliseconds retune speed I recently realized that it was retuned and not returned so it's 44 milliseconds retune speed which is fairly low doesn't really do that much on anything it's just like a you know, foolproof, failsafe kind of thing. If I go off tune, which sometimes I do, I'm like not that great at singing. Uh, it will bring it back, and it's really slow, so it won't have the, you know, it won't be too auto tuney. And I have the format option disabled because if it's like fixing the format, sometimes it makes it sound weird. I don't like that. We have a deesser here, but. While having the DS3 there, I mean it's kind of helping, but it's not doing that much because I do make I do most of my DSing on the playlist with automation clips, and that's not a good practice, but it sounds good, so I don't care. I will keep on doing that. I don't like how the plugins make it sound, so I just do this. We have saturation here, which is a save. I can just do remove that honestly. We have a compressor here, which is making it more leveled out and. You know, just having the quieter parts like more audible and louder parts more tamed. We have dimension is just chorus and it's just adding, you know, space to the vocals. I don't usually use chorus on vocals, but this time I wanted to achieve that like kind of more. Uh, I don't know how to describe the sound, but I had this specific sound in my mind. I heard from somewhere else a bunch of times, mainly on like older electronic songs, I guess. And I want to achieve that. And I realized using chorus and harmony here, I have the harmony engine here, which is not adding harmonies. Well, technically it is, but it's just like the unison. We have the same vocal playing like slightly to the right and slightly to the left. Why is it? crashing i don't want it to crash but okay it didn't crash uh we have the same vocal playing slightly to the right and slightly to the left left and it's the same vocals that pitched up or changed in any way and it makes it sound like it makes it sound a bit more spacious or like i don't know i can just demonstrate it because it's really obvious this is like without the effect and you wanted it to stop and this is with the effect 
And you want it at the stop. It kind of makes it like uh, more airy somehow. And the dimension, I can just disable this and you can see how it sounds like. And you want it at the stop. And you want it at the stop. What it essentially, it's just like the main effect of the, that specific sound I had in my mind is achieved by the harmony engine but then when I add the chorus even before the harmony engine it just makes it like sound a bit better it just makes it more coherent I guess but yeah I didn't make this a preset well this is a preset but I made it myself a bunch of months ago and uh, this was like a remake I was trying to remake the vocals well cover the vocals but make us make my vocals sound like this one specific song called daisy chain which is the name of the preset i made uh daisy chain by def sharp wish lane and jacob geoffrey i think and uh, i i really really like the jacob geoffrey part and i i was obsessed with the song for a while and i wanted to like have my vocals like it uh they sing, I don't know if it's a he or they, but they sing uh, louder and more like presently in the song. But in this song, it's like a lot calmer. But I think it, the, the rack worked, the preset worked. The only thing I didn't use, which is mostly because it was like more calm, is the saturation that I just deleted a moment ago. But other than that, it's like, it worked pretty well. And on the... And you wanted to stop. Really not well sung uh, side vocals, which have reverb disabled here, but this is not the main mixing. They're exported from this, well, not this one, uh, this. And it's the exact same thing. I can just delete the saturation here again. And it's based, it's just exactly the same thing. I don't think I changed anything. Maybe higher returns. No, not even the higher returns st speed. It's just the same thing, but quieter. And that's about it. Oh, yeah. Then I'm also like high passing it a lot higher because I don't want. Oh, but I do. I don't want like the main root sound, root note playing on the sides because it makes it sound a bit more dissonant. So I want to have like harmonies, but not like in the low mids part, but. You know, you get what I mean. I just have like high pass side vocals. They're just more, they're more, they're just there for like the airy effect. Not that much of a. And after this part, we have the second part of the drop, which we introduce it with the bass drop. I, I'm not sure if I talked about these parts before, but if I did, I'm gonna cut this part off. We have like this thing, which I, I'm pretty sure I can find in my library, but. I'm not going to attempt that. It's going to take a while. It's in my rendered folder. Remember when I talked about that? I like using that. And it's my rendered folder. We have this sound once again. And we have this. Which is... This is like from the Dance Till Your Dead song. And I was I just downloaded the acapella from YouTube. And I was like listening through it. And I heard this. This is in the raw thing. I didn't add any effects. And I, I was like, I have to use this. And I did. And it works pretty well. We have the drum switching. And that's basically it. We have some stuff getting silenced over here. To create space for like. Uh, the pre second part of the first drop. And we're leading into it with some effects. Like this one from the intro. And this thing. And yeah that's basically it. Then in the second part of the first drop. We have a couple of stuff. We have this. Uh pad and this is from the codly sample pack it's made by beak feet now they go as little fate and it's basically just like a really cool pad hit well it's not supposed to be a hit but i made it a hit and yeah it's just like a lot of reverb delay and ott apparently there's no delay damn i didn't i thought there was delay uh it's just automated down it just like goes up it dips here a little when like it's the end of the drop and i have to like make it a lot emptier uh i will explain why later and i have this pad from little fate or big feet uh their previous name again 
and it's from the Coldly sample pack once again. I love that sample pack and it's just doing this. And that's pretty much it. Like it's not, I don't think I have that many effects on it. Yeah, it's just OTT and HAS, which is just stereo delay. You can achieve the same HAS effect from here. But for some reason I chose to do it later on. And that's probably to do with the volume automation. That's before that. So yeah. We have the same stuff from the first part of the drop, of course. The bass. See, I don't think they change. Looks like the same thing. Maybe some variation. But we have the piano, of course. We have like the other piano. We have the other piano. Those are all from the first part of the drop. We have this thing playing, but this is like really sad because when I was doing the previous fail attempt of recording this, I realized this this plugin crashed and it was not playing any audio. And I'm and I'm not sure if it was crashed when I was exporting the final render. But it doesn't matter at this point because uh, you know the song is already released. There's nothing I can do. I mean I could replace the file, but uh, that doesn't really matter that much. It's just the sound. Uh, I can try to find the preset. It's, it's an SQHL preset. Yeah, this one. It's like this. Oh, well, it doesn't have the automation. Yeah, it sounds like this in song. It's just a weird layer of the same lead that I was talking about before. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. We have some other stuff here that's just, you know, the metal pipe thing leading into the second part of the drop, as it always does. Uh, we have... I don't think we have any drum variation, except maybe for the very end, uh, which just gets cut off. We have... The symbol once again, the water and everything else. We have this, which is from the intro. I talked about it. It's from the intro right here, I think. Where is it? Oh yeah, it's this sound. And like, I don't think I remembered to point this out, but we have the same thing pitched up here. It's just like uh, similar, but we have it over here as well. It's just some had it had hit this i mean i don't really like using white noise now so i use like pads and automate the volume down or add delay and reverb and it works better in most cases sometimes it doesn't and that's when i use like symbols I and mean, you should of course like use both if possible but yeah i don't know i don't know what i'm talking about we have the pad and the water and this thing that from the intro that just it plays throughout the entire song. We have this, and I think I talked about this. And yeah, I don't think I have anything else to talk about here, except for the ending part. And the ending part is essentially the exact same thing, but it's missing some elements like this pad that gets muted, and this thing gets muted, and. A bunch of other stuff like the piano and uh, this thing and like everything else like they, they get muted to create like tension or just make it like feel different because it's the end of the drop right because usually you you want to do like you want to either rise or calm it down if i at least for me if i keep the energy the same it feels like the drop cuts off abruptly, and sometimes you want that. I mean, it, there is no rules in art, but sometimes you want that, but sometimes you don't. And this is the case where I don't want it to feel like it's cutting off abruptly. So what I do is I just mute a bunch of elements. This like if you have ever done DJing, it's the same thing. You mute some elements before the drop or before something ends to create tension. And it's just like the bread in it's the same drop, but it's missing the stuff that's making it feel wide and full. So it feels like vulnerable in a way. And I don't think it has anything extra that's going on here. Or anything that's like being added. And yeah, I wanna talk about this because I think I forgot to talk about this before as well. Um uh, I have this thing 
here, which is exactly the same as this lead here. But what it's doing is I'm introducing this before the drop. So it doesn't like when this lead comes in, it doesn't feel so like random. I'm introducing it in a way that's pretty cliche. I just have it like band passed and I increase the band. It's just low pass and high pass sighting. Maybe even just low passing. So I'm just putting down the filter so like gradually over time. And it's just like leads into the drop. It introduces the thing, it works out perfectly. And it's literally just the same. I rendered this out from the drop. You can do Control Alt C and render stuff out in FL Studio if you didn't know that, by the way. Then I just put it through reverb. The reverb is getting less intense over time, I feel like. Uh, I forgot though. Then we have this. And yeah, it's doing. It's like a band pass of some sort, but it's not actually a band pass. It's two filters. And then I'm just like, you know. Over time, I can just skip here and you can see that it's just like it changes in shape. But yeah, now I can talk about this break over here, which sounds like this. Yeah. And there's a lot of new stuff here and a lot of old stuff here. First up, we have this, which is actually the sub bass from the second drop. And it sounds like this in the second drop, but we'll get to that later. But what it's doing here is I think it's an octave higher and has reverb, high passing, low passing, all that sort of stuff. You see all these automations like going down. Basically, Remember when I talked about this lead and like introducing it? Where is it? <laughs> Remember when I talked about this and like the way I introduce it here? I'm doing the exact same thing. I have the reverb getting put down gradually over time and I have like high passing getting put down and low passing getting put down. And it's just gradually turning into the sub bass. But at here it's like random weird noise. Around here it's like... It's, a, it's like a lead of some sort because you only have the harmonics and over like here it gradually just turns into the like sub bass and i didn't actually have a sub bass in the first drop because it was like a lot calmer it just had like a bass like a actual acoustic bass which had sub bass frequency so it kind of worked out but in second drop i wanted to feel like a lot high in energy higher in energy and a lot more like EDM-ish, a lot of EDM, but like, I wanted to feel like it's it was produced. And I achieved that by just adding like a really electronic sub bass and having like a really weirdly movement based, I don't know what I'm doing, and like having like a weirdly moving sub bass over here, but I will talk about that later. But over here it's just getting like... Uh, gradually introduced. I have the same bass thingy sample from the first drop and it's also in the second drop. Oh yeah, and the sub bass, this was like inspired, that's a lot of reverb, this was imp inspired by Sixth Sense's remix of I Die, Me, I Die For Me 2, I think. It's, I think it's like an Edison Ray song, I'm not sure, but the remix is called I Die For Me 2 by six cents and it had like a really nasty like harmonic sub bass in the drop and it was like future garage inspired well maybe uk garage more than future but i i really liked it i was obsessed with the song so oh yeah i think the original song was called obsessed well anyways i was obsessed with it so i i was like trying to do something similar to that and i did it <laughs> i think i think it worked out pretty decently in the drop but yeah, other than that, we have like the mid bass kind of thing from the first drop, and it's in the beginning of the second drop as well. We have the piano, of course, as always. You, you always have the piano, at least if it's like something I make, like I always have the piano. But my English accent is horrible right now. Let me fix this. We have this pad, it's called Musician, and I stole it from the Porter Robinson song Musician. 
And what I did is there was like a section where this pad would play really quietly. And I just like sampled that section. Then I put it in a granulizer to make it like longer. Then I just stole the pad. I stole the pad from Porter Robinson. I'm such like, I'm a thief. But yeah, it sounds good. And it's free on my website. So just go there and download it. It's like a Google Drive link. So I mean, yeah, you can just download it. It was like this, and I had like some reverb and stuff over it. We have this, which is basically remember when I talked about the thing that was introducing uh, the lead over here? Uh, I used the same sample, I threw it in the granulizer, and it made it sound like this. This may have been for another song, I'm not quite sure, but it's, it's essentially the same thing. And it's the same lead, maybe playing like a single note instead of that melody. Maybe it's not the same sample that's being granulized. I think it, I'm pretty sure it's playing a single note over and over again. And I treat in the granulizer and randomize every knob. Well, uh, yeah, of course we have the guitar, it's playing like static notes. Then we have like this thing here from the intro and that thing from the intro and this thing from the intro and this thing from the intro. <laughs> Those are like this middle section is just stuff from the intro, including this. Then we have this, which is the same thing from the intro, but it's reversed this time, so it's like variation. Yeah. We have the kicks, and they're arranged in a way that they resemble a heartbeat. The second hit is like quieter, then here is just both quieter. We have like this, and at some point it just turns into like playing at the beginning of every. It's like yeah, it's like it turns into a four on the floor kind of thing. Then it gets like triplets here, maybe. I'm not sure. Can't, I can't think. It's just kicks being arranged. It's not difficult. I have this pad, which is uh, something I made maybe a long time ago. I'm not sure. Probably in 2021. And it's pitched up one because it has to be in key. And it's mixed. It, it's, it only has some high cut and like... Uh, sorry, low cut and like high shelving, shelving. We have this sound, which is along with this automation, it's like some texture. And what this originally is, is if I disable everything, it's like rumbling and thunder and like planes crashing kind of sound. I made this myself. I have this like patcher. A uh, plugin that I made, or it's more like a rack than a plugin, maybe I'm not sure. But basically, if you put like rock breaking sounds and like some rain sounds in it and play it, it just turns it into like a continuous, infinite in a way kind of loop of thunderstorm and planes crashing. And like, I at the time I had just like created that patch so. I was like, I was trying to use it in every project, and this one, it's not even like, it doesn't even remember, like, resemble the original sound, but it's like good texture. I think it adds some, like, interesting stuff to this part. Even if you can't properly hear it at all, it does. Then we have the water, of course, and the rain, because, you know, you gotta have those, this from the intro. We have this rock falling sound. And interesting trivia about this is I found a website. Well, a friend told me about this website uh, where you can download sound effects and stuff from like niche old games or popular old games like Super Mario Galaxy is there, I think. I'm not sure. What I did is I just downloaded like stuff and get the sound effects. And if I, I, I feel morally okay if I use it as a background element for texture but if I'm using it at the front I usually just make sure to like alter it in some way or another so it's not like stealing we have the same thing from the intro but this time it's with like reverb and it's the same channel as like you know, the musician pad that I talked about it's like weird EQs here I like this and a lot of reverb hope it doesn't crash yeah it doesn't and we have this, which is also from the drop, if you remember. I talked about it. And we 
well this this is later on in the part and we have this from the drop again and then we have the strings and this is like one of my favorite parts of the song the strings i love the strings yeah and if i have to like explain how i did them it's basically like two layers i have two contacts it's treasury violin by native instruments the good library i recommend buying it getting it or whatever and it's linked to these two where is it it's linked to these two mixer tracks and in the first one, this is a sustain, and the other is the tremolo. This is the one that's like, doo -doo -doo. and this is the one going like, doo -doo 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 -doo. you know, <laughs> that was a really weird like impression, but you get it. Uh, this has some EQ, and they're, they're like mainly the same processing, I think. Almost looks similar. Uh, we have suit. I'm not gonna open it because it's not gonna look good. It does this when my project is using like over 10 gigabytes of RAM, so it just decides to not have a GUI. I was lucky to have this added before, you know, uh, that happened. But yeah, it's kind of like weird. Uh, I have the suit. It has like a preset called, I think it was like Violin Warmer. I'm pretty sure it's using that. If it's not using that, it's, I just manually like put the high end part. This has like an EQ interface. I just put it up in the high end so it doesn't like ear destroying high ends, if you get what I mean. I have reverb and that's about it. Don't move this down. There's like an EQ that's cutting the lows. And these two balances are for volume automations. I talked about it before. And that's about it for the tremolo. It's, I mean, it's just EQ cutting the lows. And we have this delay that's being automated at the well, well, it's not being automated, I think I made that up, okay, never mind uh well, it has delay and reverb and another e q cutting low lens, and these two for automating the volume at certain parts uh and yeah that's that's about everything, I think I don't think I skipped over anything, oh yeah, we have this from the drop as well. It's just the camera sound. Then for the second part of the section, we hey, uh, let me play it. Yeah, it's lagging a lot, but I can talk about I can talk about stuff individually, so it doesn't lag. We still have the sub bass and everything else going on. I'm not gonna talk about the stuff that was here before. We have this, which is some sound design thing I made like. A year ago and and what it is exactly i forgot about but it's basically some random pads being ran through uh a patcher that i made which is like uh makes stuff sound spectrally weird and glitchy i could go in detail about how i made it but that would like take an hour probably so i'm not gonna do that it's basically just like some multi-band stuff randomized using LFO controllers and it just makes it sound like this and we have this which is you know the, the same thing but like different sound and they both just have high passing because yeah I have this high pass channel for when I have stuff like if I have a bunch of like random sounds that I just want to have that low end like disappear so that it doesn't clash with anything I just create this high pass channel mixer channel and I just link them all here so that I don't waste like CPU or mixer tracks because for some reason in 2024, we have 20, 125 uh, mixer tracks in FL Studio. That's crazy to me. But I mean, yeah, we're complaining. I hope they fix it. We have the bass guitar coming back in and it's like, this time it's playing like the variation that's just doing the down descending thing. It's doing like the high and low stuff. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. We have this sound design thing, which is, you know, it's very loud. It has a resonant frequency, but I like it. We have the intro strings coming back. And I think it's exactly just copied and pasted here. We have the piano. Of course, it's not mixed, I think. Uh, we have the musician pad going on and all of those stuff. I'm not going to talk about the stuff that I talked about. 
Uh, we have the drums coming back. But they have like some weird kind of glitch effect going on here. Uh, I don't think I have the effects here because I think I deleted the mixer track when I exported it. But it's basically just, I think I'm using the gigahertz lossy plugin with some sort of presets that they already have. Like it's the factory presets. And I was going through them and it made it sound like this and I loved it. I, I think I used Portal as well. That one sound design plugin effect. Uh, but yeah, it's, yeah. This is the most interesting part and I totally forgot how I made this sound. So that's amazing. We have, of course have the kick over here and the pad and that and all of that. Oh yeah, the funny thing about this is in the drop and everything else, it was more like apparent and bright. And But in this part, I link it to the same mixer track as the musician pad. And it's like really soft. Then over here, we have the shaker in the second drop, in the first drop, getting introduced. And it gets like louder uh, gradually. So I don't have an automation, but I just make it louder in every sample, I guess. Well, not every. But like this part is louder. We have the flap impact thing i use it as a rise in a in a way and yeah that's about this section i think uh there are the there are the vocals that i'm gonna talk about so let's go down to those let's go i hope it doesn't crash think you should feel fine i can't tell when you lie you just can't find maybe it's in your blood it's in your blood you're only for the other side of the fence that you build up, up with, and you wanted it to stop. Yeah, that's it. And I want to talk about like the lyrics and stuff for a bit, um, because I think I will forget to talk about it at the end of the video, the vocals. And so, in the beginning, it says like, "And you wanted it to stop. I couldn't give you up." Uh, I want to run off out, but I couldn't even walk at all. Then it's just like same thing without the adult part. Um, the meaning, at least the meaning that I put into, because you can just put your own meaning on songs. Like it depends on the listener at all times. But what the meaning for me is, I wanted this uncertainty to like end. I wanted to stop. And here I'm talking about myself in second person. Like I'm referring to myself as you. I want you wanted it to stop, but like in reality, I wanted it to stop. And pretty quickly, I switch into talking about myself in first person, and I say I couldn't give it, I couldn't give you up. I mean, this could like be interpreted as like a romantic thing. Maybe I meant it as a romantic thing when I was like thinking of the lyrics, but as the song grew and as the song like evolved, this was like more like I couldn't give. Uh, the thing that I loved the most or the thing that I loved a lot up I couldn't give it up and I'm talking about you and the you in this context is music but it can also be like a person or whatever else you want it to be because uh, it depends on the listener but when I was writing this I think it was both about like a person and like music at the same time but yeah i couldn't give you up it refers to i couldn't give music up and i wanted it to stop refers to like i wanted it to stop because like i wanted the situation to end because the situation is like i don't know if i'm like cut for music i don't know if i'm gonna do music uh, and i couldn't give it up i answered it i couldn't give it up and i want to run off out because it feels so frustrating and I couldn't even walk because, like, I can't walk away from this. I couldn't even walk. I want to run off out. I want to, like, keep everything up. But, like, I couldn't even walk. I can't give it up. I'm st stuck. So, yeah. And you ask me why, and you ask me why. This part is, like, uh, that's, it's, honestly, it's, like, a random buzzword, buzz phrase that I came up with. But, like, me asking myself, the, I put meaning on lyrics later on, kind of. As I'm writing them, I put meaning on them. But it's like, and you ask why, and you ask me why. Which is like, me asking myself why I'm doing it. And in this part, it's like, I have a switch, it's like different vocals. And it goes like, 
I think you should feel fine. Well, not I think, but I couldn't rhyme with I think, so I just said think. When I'm like, when I'm talking about the lyrics, I always say I think, but it's actually think. But it says, think you should feel fine. I can tell when you lie, because you just can't find. Maybe it's in your blood. And what that means is, think you should feel fine is referring to about the music that I make and about like the situations that I'm in, about like, the course that I'm taking, I was I'm taking engineering, and like I think I should feel fine about it because it's like the financially solid option, and I think I should feel fine about the music that I'm making because it's like the thing that I love making, but immediately after it's followed by a contradiction, which is like I can tell when you lie, so I'm like I'm lying to myself when I say that I think I should feel fine, and then immediately after that I follow it with. Because you just can't find, which is referring to like meaning in anything. Like I can't find meaning in studying engineering because it's not the thing I like the most. I like doing music more or like just lying around every day being lazy. I like it more. And I can't find a meaning behind like doing that. But then it also refers to music because like I just can't find inspiration. I just can't find like a reason to do it other than why that like i want to do it so it's like i just can't find the answer and and then i say like maybe it's in your blood so this is referring to it's pretty straightforward it's like maybe it's in my blood to like not know what i want to do maybe i'm just like uncertain by nature so it's like i'm questioning myself and then the next part is like it's in your blood yearning for the other side of a fence that you build up up with all your might and it gets cut off by like the and you wanted it to stop section but this part is like that so it's in it's in your blood is like i kind of wanted to have for the dramatic effect because like blood and that's like edgy i guess but also wanted to have like the delay emphasis on blood it's in your blood 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 but yeah i did that it's in your blood yearning for it's like really edgy, but yeah, it's like, it's in your blood. I'm giving the answer to the question from the previous part. I'm saying like, it's in my blood to be uncertain and it's in my blood to yearn for the other side. Like if I'm making music, I yearn for being knowledgeable in like technical engineering stuff and making money, <laughs> living an actual life. And I yearn for the other side. And the next, next part is like, of a fence that you build up up with your own your mind it's like it's like a single sentence but it's like i built this fence myself between my hobbies and my education job whatever i yearn for the other side which is like my hobby my, the thing that i like doing music i wanted to do that but then when i'm doing that i yearn for the other side which is studying and being successful traditionally or like in an orthodox way just like going through uh, like studying university subjects and making money and all that stuff like i yearn for that because like i don't want to be a burden to my family in a way or to anyone at that point but that's the meaning and like a, an up with all your might is just like you know i built this barrier between those two things uh, knowingly and like pretty straightforwardly in a way and the rest is just like the same stuff okay then we're at the drop and this drop is interesting because it starts like a little later it has like a doesn't start on the first hit it doesn't start on the first like metronome tick and i think it creates a cool effect i did this in like a bunch of other songs before like with you but yeah it's mostly same stuff from the first drop it has this pad and that pad and like this sound and like the piano the other piano this pad from this section is new and then we have like the thing that died <laughs> i did the, did it die again i don't know why it's not making a sound uh, we have the guitars and this sound that i really like and this metal sound and that i mean it's most of the stuff from the other parts of the project nothing new in that aspect we have the tank break over here i like sampling the tank break so 
assuming that it's just pitched up to fit the key. Has some kind of processing. Well, it's just have an EQ. It just has an EQ. Uh, the drums start off with this. And here in the drums, it's a bit like different. We have a new kick, which is more clickier. And people like this kick better. Uh, when I showed, asked them for feedback, you were like, this kick is better. And all that sort of stuff. We have another snare. It's a clap and the snare. They're, these are from like the Coldly sample pack. Same for the kick. They're from the Coldly sample pack. Uh, I have this clap, adding high end to the clap. And that's about it for drums. And I can just play the drums all together, I guess, to have like a better, you know, we can see how different it is. Compare that to like the first drop. Yeah, that's a lot more stuff going on. I think I like this better. I like it a lot. Um, then we have this pad, this symbol, and this sample from you know these are all from before I showed them. I have this impact. I don't know where this is from, but this is like some random EDM electronic so song like impact. Uh, I think it's just like high pass. Doesn't even have any mixing. It's linked to a mixer track, but it doesn't have any mixing. That's crazy. It doesn't have any low rank, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, that's just the way I do things, I guess. I have the water sample as always, and this divinity sample as always, and the kitchen shaker because I love this shaker. You can hear it in like most of my songs. I love it. Like I even have it twice here. Uh, we have the main melody, and I love this melody. I cannot like talk about it enough so i'm not gonna talk about it at all it's just like really cool i love the melody we have this little sine wave going on i think this is just consolidated or i think it's the thing from the intro or somewhere else it's just a sine wave that's nothing weird we have these these are just some like high end elements that just add energy and we also have this camera thing once again we have this thing leading into the drop. It's just like, it's from the beginning of this part, I think. And uh, it's just like some glass breaking as a Simon's example. We have the same bells going on. We have the same these stuff going on, but there's like a new clap here now. It's mostly just adding like more emphasis on the snare. And this, this thing, I think it follows the kick now and makes it like more airy in a way that doesn't stand out too much. We have this from the first drop and we have the strings still going on strong. I love these strings. They're amazing. I love them. That was a weird artifact. And in the drop, there's nothing weird going on with the vocals. It's just louder. But right before the drop, you can like hear that like... The side vocals have a lot of reverb that are that is like being automated up. You can see it here. It and that's mainly because I wanted to have like a riser here that is not actually a riser, but it's just some like ambient and the vocals getting more airier and everything getting like more wide and weird right before the drop. So it's like building up tension. You can build up tension by like removing or making stuff like uh, the rover less wet or you can create tension by doing the opposite and just like building up a lot of stuff instead of removing them they both create tension in different ways and useful for like you know switching to a different section oh yeah then we have like this thing from this part getting like automated up to build up tension and the string getting like introduced again once again well not introduced but like it's getting automated up i think there there should be like something else here it's that thing that's also like adding some rumble noise like it's getting louder gradually and we have this from remember like from the very well it's just this 
and it's the same thing, just reverse. Maybe not even reverse, but just like volume automated up. And it works out very well. And for the second part of this drop, nothing changes, it's the same thing. I, I mean, I like the way it sounded, so. There are a couple stuff going on here. Because we have like this weird little gap here. <laughs> We have the double kick and everything getting muted and everything getting back unmuted. So it's like you pause for a second, you're like, what is happening? Then it's just like everything's back up and you're like, it's more intense in a way, I guess. You have the double kick. I like doing double kicks. They sound cool and edgy. And I like stuff that sound like that. <laughs> and of course, after doing that like little cut thing, you have to like get some colors. So we have the same impact sound repeating here and this laser thing which is just vocal artifacts with OTT I think. Vocal plugin artifacts with OTT. It's, it sounds like a fuller, it sounds like a laser so I just added it here. I think it sounded cool. We have this little thing that gets like very little screen time in the song but it has a lot of delay and it has some sort of or is it has some sort of reverb that's making it like wider in a way? So it's just like in the background, you can barely hear it, but it's there. If you focus on it, you can hear it in the song. Uh, it's just adding some like little side melodies. I like doing that sort of stuff. And yeah, I didn't talk about the bass because this is the last thing in the second drop. That's like it's the main instrument, it's the main star in the second drop, the bass. And what it's doing is. I have two basses. They sound like this. Yeah, they're doing that. And the first bass is just ample bass P. It's the free version, it's the light ample bass. I think all the like acoustic basses in the song is the free version of that plugin. Then we have Serum. And in Serum, we have like a side, this is just a sine wave, but uh, I added harmonics in the wavetable editor, wave shaper, whatever thing, I don't know. It, because it's like, I had a sub bass from, it's made by one of my friends called Antasis now, they used to be called Reverse, that's why it's called Reverse. Uh, they used to do like dubstep, and this is like a dubstep bass normally. But I made it more pluckier, I edited it. And it's like some kind of release and it's like, it feels more like a hit or like a 808 of some sort. And normally it sounds like this. But then I add like the 12th. Not the 12th, I think I add the 6th. Yeah, I add the 6th. It makes it sound really cool and... Uh, I was like, I, I will use that. I was trying to remake like that one specific song that I talked about before, that one remix. So yeah, that that's basically what I had in my mind. I can show the remix actually. It's this remix, but I don't know if it will get copyright claim. So I will just play like a really short part. And I said me too. It's ever so slightly different, the bass, but I liked it better this way. So I was like, I'm going to use that. And the second instance of like bass, the acoustic sounding bass, is just like distorted. And just playing the same notes but like a little different. Yeah, I mean... Uh, the, the sub bass is a lot more complicated, I guess. I don't know what my logic behind putting a nose was. I was like, whatever, whatever vari variation sounds cool, I will do it. And I just started like pitching stuff up and down randomly. And at the end, this was this was the result. And I think it sounded really good. Then yeah, after all these, we have to switch to the outro, which is just the same bass drop that, uh, from the ample bass P light. And we have, we don't really have that many stuff doing other stuff, but we have this thing going up and the metal pipe as always 
Then we have the Jiren thing once again. Then we have this, which is, I talked about the sound design stuff that I did before. It's the same thing. I just put it here. And I think I use like a weird kind of combination of like two, three stuff. And it's just like a, it's kind of like a riser. But not actually, it's just like a weird glitch patch that, you know, introduces the outro. Then in the outro, which sounds like this. Okay, I'm doing like, I'm doing a bunch of stuff, first of all. You see this giant block of automations. These are all like shakers and high-end elements getting automated down. And sometimes up. But that's like the wet level. So it's like being brought to the background. So it's not as bright. And it's not as noisy towards the end. So it's like easier. When it ends, it doesn't feel like all the energy is lost. Because you decrease the energy gradually by making like the high-end go away. And... The shakers and the rhythmic elements like all disappear except for like a couple but it basically has the same elements it has this pad once again and that pad uh i use them like impacts honestly then we have the bass being like different <laughs> we have the distorted acoustic bass and it's playing like something else it's really new it's different from the rest of the song And I think it repeats here, but uh, I think I was inspired from Paul Robinson trying to feel alive. It has a section that had a bass line like this, and I like temporarily wrote this down, and it ended up not being temporary. It ended up being in the final uh, export of the song, and it ended up being like, you know, the most unique kind of section, I guess. Except for maybe like the sub bass over there, like that sound. But yeah, other than that, we have like, we have the same, oh, what? Other than that, we have like the same, uh, you know, the bells and the pianos and other stuff. I'm not going to talk about any of these because I talked about them like four times already. There's nothing different. Uh, there's, I'm going to talk about the stuff that's going on over here, but except for that, there's nothing different. Uh, we have like the piano. playing different chords but something funny about this is the bass line is like this but the chords over here doesn't match and I was gonna change it to have like the correct chords but weirdly I found it like better this way so I ended up not doing that I ended up having like the same chord playing than the bass line moving around and it kind of worked. If you focus too much on it, maybe it doesn't work, but uh, it kind of creates like a weird kind of tension, which I like. And if you go down here, where the interesting stuff is happening, we have the kitchen shaker. And this is like the kitchen shaker, but with Sound Toys Crystallizer. It's a really good plugin. And if you can't get it, you should get it. It has that over it, and it's like a granular kind of delay. And what's happening here is like it's not, it's indistinguished. It just sounds like crickets. It just sounds like noise. And I'm automating the volume up on that, so like at the end it gets cut off, and it feels like, you know, it feels like someone dropped a coin at the end and has like a funny sound. So I kept it. Then the second instance of the kitchen shaker is like. The regular one from way before and what is what is happening is it's just getting like landed into the background uh, the volume is being put down and it gets like the reverb on it gets more intense so it's like more in the background towards the end i mean this lead is just the same as always it's just uh, there's nothing different about it and that's what makes it good because everything else is different in this part except for uh, i mean a lot of stuff but so much just like new stuff is happening but this is staying the same so it's like it's like an old friend 
uh, walking you out of a door at a party in a foreign apartment or something like that. That's a weird analogy, but yeah, I think it makes sense. We have this thing, which is still being a sine wave plug. There's nothing funny happening about that. I talked about it three times and nothing changed. And these are all just like the impacts, rides, whatever, white noise, energy stuff. And I think, yeah, they also have the same thing going on with the kitchen shaker. They get quieter and blended into the background, but they don't have the crystallizer. So that's different. But they get blended into the background. We have this thing once again, the bells, of course, always there. We have this thing also getting quieter, I think. Or maybe not. It's probably not getting quieter, honestly. We have this clap getting quieter. We have this thing repeating once again and they don't have any change happening so it's like the same as that other lead but it's barely like audible I guess so it doesn't matter. We have the strings once again. Yeah, I love it. And it's repeating here. Then we have this other string coming in here. It's like brand new. No one has heard it before. It's doing that. It, I really like this lead. Uh, well, it's not exactly a lead, but in this part, it's kind of is. It kind of is. And... What I'm doing to is, is this automation was for this lead string. And what it's doing is starting off quieter, so it doesn't draw all the attention to itself suddenly, because it's new and like strong. It's like a really full sound. It starts off like quieter, then it gets like louder when it's like em emphasizing like the higher notes. It's going like really emotional. This gets like it gets louder. Then at some certain notes, I felt like it was too loud, so I brought it down. Then I brought it up. It's just like I'm adding expression to the strings by changing the volume. And normally, if you're doing like an actual orchestral kind of thing. This wouldn't work. This would sound like weird. But since this is like a really electronic song and with like a lot of other stuff going on, it's not really noticeable. So you can get away with doing stuff like this if it sounds cool. So I do that. And yeah, at the end, it has like this static note. And I just bring the volume down as if it's like disappearing. And yeah, I think that's the end of the song. I think we, we were done with it. But except for like the very end, we have the yeah yeah sound, the funny vocal a cappella thing once again. We have these notes not ending at all at once, but rather just like ending randomly. And we have some reverb stuff going up. We have like we have this pad linked to this, uh, and it's like getting louder towards the end because I didn't want it to feel like so full at the in like beginning of this part. But towards the end, it gets like louder, then it just dies off. And this pad also like rises up. And at the end, it just dies. And when everything cuts off and everything dies and this lost like little part, only this plays. And we end the song with the main lead. doesn't feel that way kind of like it doesn't feel like everything's ending because everything has like reverb tails but they're like a lot less apparent at the last little section that this like Sean is on and has the delay tail and it's just like it's the last thing you remember so it's like really gets in your mind and it's like an earworm and you remember this meat lead and yeah 
it's calculated. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think that's actually about it. Except for except for Jerry's sample, of course, like automating getting automated down because it's like it's really long. It, the delay doesn't end, so I have to end it manually. And yeah, I think that's actually it. I talked about everything in the song. And I hope that helps. And yeah, peace out.